let's talk about loyal, you know? So like what, obviously the process of, of getting it up, getting it running, what is the, the bigger point? Like, what are you, not just for the dogs, the owners, like for general society. So let's just kind of do this kind of holistic kind of thing of what loyal is. And then maybe you can go into specific things about the, uh, um, the studies and the science and stuff, but then maybe even just kind of touch on the communication, because this is an interesting you know, kind of thing that I, I, I came through this just from the normal uh, aging longevity, Lord Dimming. I actually, Aubrey de Grey was the, the, the first kind of way I, I even knew about the field at all. And then now it's a completely different thing that now we're talking about uh, dogs, you know, and animals. Yeah. And then that's like, okay, I'm, I'm in, but like, how do, how do we get here? You know? Yeah. So I, the thesis of loyal, uh, the goal of loyal to get the first ever drug proof for lifespan extension, health span extension. So number of years lived, quality of years lived yep. um, for dogs, but also just in general, <laughs> do it yes. and then use that momentum, uh, the like, insane amounts of like biological insight, uh, the competency of a translational team uh, to go and build the first ever human aging drugs too. Uh, and really like my goal in life is to build uh, what I tend to describe as like the SpaceX and Moderna of aging. Um, so basically the idea of like the company that um, when people think about aging, they think about loyal, like they think about mm. um, us as like the predominant brand, you know, people will cite hopefully one day like loyal as exposing them to the field of aging or the reason why they're excited. If you work in aging, like, you know, it's a, the totally. highest stamp is to have like, you know, worked with loyal before you go and start your own aging company and like all the like other people who then go start, like there's be a whole industry. Like I think aging will be bigger than oncology one day. Uh, it should because it encompasses many forms of oncology in addition to completely unrelated mechanisms, also unrelated diseases also. Um, yeah. But I think you just need a big catalyst, like how, and Moderna has really catalyzed the mRNA field and SpaceX is really catalyzing catalyzed you know space race modern sure. day space race um yeah and so we are kind of currently focusing on uh two specific things so one is a drug for uh large dogs so large dogs have this like very weird like size lifespan dimorphism dimorphism so the larger a dog is the shorter its lifespan is um and it goes to a 2x differential so a chihuahua mm -hmm. will live approximately like 16 to 18 years on average while a Great Dane might live like seven to nine, uh, yep. which is Got weird. It. Like you don't see that two X differential in any other species. And it's very strong, like, like 0.7 R squared or something like that. Strong correlated with body weight. And, and, not to, and, and just to, and for any animals, like you said, like the bigger you are, the, like the bigger heart you have to have and stuff like that. That's you're, you're saying the two X is, is what's interesting on both sides, like within uh, the species, within yeah. the species. Yes. Yeah. That's a huge uh, space. <laughs> yeah. You don't see that in humans, right? Right. <laughs> no, no, yeah, definitely not in humans. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically like, the hypothesis is that dogs actually have a monogenic and induced monogenic disorder for aging because we selectively bred dogs and we basically created all these founder effects, bottleneck effects when we were trying to create these phenotypes. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like the phenotype tied to growing fast um, was also uh, uh, incidentally, unintentionally also seems to drive a faster aging rate and therefore a quicker death. So that's our first drug, this idea to like ameliorate that. Mm -hmm. The second drug is for dogs of any size of any breed. It's a bit more of a treatment mechanism, which I think will just be important from a, you know, treatment. It's just like always an easier thing pharmaceutical uh, to sell and for people to use pharmaceutically. And it's basically the idea is like, caloric restriction is the most well-validated um, longevity intervention. It um, has been shown to extend lifespan in Labrador retrievers. So laboratory retrievers calorically restricted 25% live approximately two years longer, have delayed incidence of cancer, delayed incidence of osteoarthritis. I just actually have a, I don't know if I can raise my <laughs> jacket up, but I actually have a tattoo. Show those arm. guns. Yeah, ticket Hell to yeah. the gun. Oh, um, okay. The elegance, the black six mouth, and then the black labs from that it's okay. arena study. <laughs> Nice, nice. So if anybody says I'm not dedicated, you know. I'm, oh, no, you have it on tattooed. your body. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's okay. It's hidden in the back. So if loyal fails, you know, I won't be like triggered for the rest of my life. <laughs> triggered. That's um, hilarious. But yeah, so the drug is basically like, uh, instead of, you know, caloric restriction is an extrinsic way to induce, uh, improve metabolic resiliency, metabolic fitness, drugs an intrinsic way. So it's basically targeting the downstream mechanisms. We hypothesize like primary drivers of this lifespan extension from caloric restriction phenotype. Um, and then we're also working on endpoints. So kind of 
you know, we're able to potentially, you know, follow dogs and see lifespan extension that will never work for people. Like it's just mm, not going to happen. Right. So right, you right. really need a circuit endpoint. Um, so something that like cholesterol to statins, right? Like what is the thing that if you give a, pharmace- a new pharmaceutical and it moves, you know, X, Y, and Z thing that we know um, that it can be extended for lifespan extension because it will extend lifespan. Right. Um, even though we haven't seen that lifespan phenotype yet. Um, so that's another big area of work. Um, and trying to think what else, and a lot of just like basic science research, like understanding novel targets. Uh, we have a partnership with something called the Golden Retriever Lifetime Study, which is like this longitudinal data set uh, given approximately every six months to goldens of like uh, blood, uh, saliva, things like that. And it's interesting because goldens, A, longitudinal data sets are kind of the holy grail, but B, goldens uh, develop above average amounts of various forms of age-related cancers. So you want to see if there's genetic or epigenetic uh, disposition oh, in the golden side do or don't develop the cancer, which um, could be relevant for the human forms of these cancer too. 